Uh, as I said before, uh, we here at Robin Hood Radio have a nice association, a terrific association with the Foundation for Community Health. Uh, we like to uh, put forward how important the Foundation for Community Health is in our area. And uh, by doing that, we interview uh, different organizations, uh, almost 99.99999% uh, uh, nonprofit organizations uh, that do good for our community uh, on, the, on the general sense in a lot of, in a lot of different areas. And uh, uh, we have been set up with a, a terrific interview by Gertrude Sullivan this morning uh, about something I knew very little about until uh, Gertrude informed me about this organization. Uh, it's called Long Table Harvest, and our guest today is uh, the director and co-founder of Long Table Harvest, Arva Berkman. Um, uh, can, uh, Arva, good morning, and thanks for joining us this morning. Morning. Thanks for having me. Well, let's, uh, let's first of all talk a little bit about uh, Long Table Harvest, what you are and where you are. Yeah, um, our mission is to cultivate social and economic justice in our local rural community. And we are based in Germantown in Columbia County, and we service basically all of Columbia County as well as mid and northern Duchess. Okay, so now you're co founder of this, uh, of this organization. Uh, when did you, when did you? actually start working on this and set it up i mean i, I you know i mean i see you you've got a you've got a history of being very involved in in things that benefit the community but how, how did this come to fruition yeah we started in the fall of 2015 um prior to starting long table i had worked on organic farms in the area so i had a built a robust network of connections to area farmers during that time and um, decided to pivot my career from farming to working in the nonprofit sector um, related to food and farming. So after having spent that time on the farms, I was confronted with uh, the amount of abundance that is either left in the field or unsold at the end of the week, um, just basically because it's your insurance policy as a farmer. Um, you know, you need to plant. 15% more than what you want to sell because of pests and weather, things like that. It's so unpredictable. You decided to mobilize on that abundance and figure out how to share that with our community members in need. Now, and now how did you, uh, how did you set this up? It is this, cause to me, this sounds like it would be a daunting task because in, in our area, we have so many different local farms and so much different uh, local produce. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how did you set, sort this out and how did you contact uh, the farmers and uh, did, or did they contact you? Yeah, no, I reached out to most of the farms since I was connected to many of them already. And it turns out a lot of them are already working with their local food pantries, but had enough food to um, give to us, and since we're able to pick up from over, historically we worked with over 50 farms, but on average we probably work with about 25 each week. Um, when we pick up from them throughout the day, we're able to collect such a diverse um, variety of foods so that the pantries are actually given a lot more choice, as well as the other sites we work with. We, just, we don't just work with food pantries, we work with community organizations and after-school programs and things like that. It really varies. Um, yeah. Yeah, when I'm when I when I look at uh, at at what you do and how you do it, um, you have uh, an interesting system uh, called uh, gleaning programs. You have three different uh, gleaning programs that I see. Let's talk a little bit about those programs, what they are, and uh, we'll go over go over them uh, program by program. Uh, your first gleaning program. Sure. Um, we started this in the spring of 2020 um, in direct response to the coronavirus pandemic where there happened to be a lot of food shortages, which at the same time mobilized a lot of folks to start their own either community gardens or backyard gardens. Um, organizations were starting gardens, so it seemed like there was a real imperative for people to grow their own food. Um, and since we're already working with farms and going there, um, seedlings, to distribute seedlings and glean them made sense for us, just given the fact that 
were already at the farm, and they tend to have more than what they plant out in the field. So um, we started distributing those as well as working with some farms to grow out specific crops for us. So that program has continued since 2022, and we're currently distributing seedlings right now. And that basically goes from April through June. Um, And then our main gleeding program is where we collect already harvested produce, um, as well as frozen meat and dairy. Um, That's a little less frequent. We do that two days a week, Monday and Tuesdays, uh, from June through November. We visit over 20 farms, um, picking up any food that they have and distributing that to all of our sites that we work with, which I think right now is about 30. Um, And the last gleaning program is where we work in the field to harvest. Uh, food directly on the farm with volunteers, and that's been something that we haven't been doing as much lately, but we're hoping to organize a few fruit gleans this season. So going to apple orchards, um, fruit farms, and collecting those items since we don't get as much fruit as we would generally like. We are speaking with RFS uh, uh Merkin, who is the director and co-founder of Long Table Harvest in uh, Germantown. Uh, what's amazing to me is I, I, I look at the at the notes uh, and that were provided, uh, b- having been founded in 2016, uh, 275,000 pounds of mostly organic produce from this area and farms uh, you you have dealt with. I mean, that's that's a, that seems like a staggering amount. Yeah, um, I think it is, and also there's even more food beyond that that doesn't actually make it to the table. So yeah, it's it's complicated. <laughs> I was going to say it's complicated, and I, I know I'm, we all became aware of, of 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 how how much food is wasted in this country. Um, but to see a local program like this, which directly affects. Uh, local farmers, but not only local farmers, but people who who need the food. Now, now, how does somebody get a hold of you uh, if 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 they want to participate in this, either as a farmer or as individuals out there that look for this food? Yeah, the best way to get in contact with us is probably through our website. We, if you are a farmer and you're interested, um, it's longtableharvest.org. Um, we're also on Instagram at longtableharvest. Same on Facebook. Um, we have a form that you can fill out um, with just some brief information about your crop and how to get in touch with you. Um, so you can, you can connect to us that way. And then if you're looking for a distribution site, we have a whole list as well on our website of all of the pantries and organizations that we service. And, and how many volunteers? I mean, do, you, do you have a, a, a large cadre of volunteers that, that work with you? Uh, we have a list, I think, of over 200 right now. We're always looking for more, especially since we'll be doing some infield gleaning this year. Um, but we've had to pause on a lot of the, the volunteer work. So right now it's a, a small and mighty staff of two people. I was going to say COVID must have really affected you over the past two years. Yeah, actually more in terms of how much food we've been able yeah. to access. So in 2020, we had our lowest gleaning year to date. And then... In 2021, we had our greatest gleaning year, so it really shook things up. Uh, and and what is your association with the Foundation for Community Health? How, how, I mean, what do they mean to you? How, how did they help you out? Yeah, they're a really important donor of ours. Um, we are, are very much a local organization. So much of our funding and support comes from foundations like like Foundations for Community Health, as well as individual donors making monthly donations. Um, Yeah, we really feel like we are of this community, and with the support of Foundations for Community Health, we're able to connect to numerous pantries and numerous farms, and without their support, um, and and everyone else's support, it wouldn't wouldn't happen. Is this something that... uh that you'd like to see expand to other counties in the area? Have, have other people in other counties uh, contacted you and, and gone over what you do and how you do it? Yeah, we're actually connected to a network that we've created with uh, three other organizations throughout the Hudson Valley, and collectively we cover the entire Hudson Valley in terms of our gleaning reach. So, yeah, there's folks doing it. Um, 
they're doing it a little different because their area is a little bit different and um it's really good to be in touch with them and sort of troubleshooting together well once again if people want more information longtableharvest.org longtableharvest.org Robert, thanks for joining us today here on Robin Hood Radio and uh, continued success and continued uh, doing what you're doing and not only benefiting farmers, but the general population as a whole and uh, and, and, and stopping the, the waste of, of food that might otherwise just not, not be used. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. It just uh, sounds like a, a, an incredibly uh, hard project to set up and do, uh, but they do it.